Hi everyone, today we're tackling a big question, is China simply a rival on the global stage for the US or is there more to this story? A lot of Americans don't just see China as another competitor but as the top threat to the US according to recent studies. But here's where it gets interesting. The current US administration seems to see things differently especially after some high-level meetings. They've shifted their language suggesting a move towards viewing China not as an adversary but merely as a competitor. What do you think about this change in stance? Smash that like button, share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more insightful discussions. Is China now just another competitor on the world stage with the United States? Are the United States and China entering a new era of mutual respect and cooperation? The American people don't think so. According to a recent Pew Research study of American voters, China is viewed as the top threat to the United States. They're not wrong. The Biden administration, however, doesn't agree. Its latest assessment of China came at a meeting just prior to the APEC Economic Leaders Week last November. The language describing China is telling. After the summit meeting between President Joe Biden and Chinese leader Xi Jinping, the administration suddenly decided that China was no longer a strategic competitor, but just a competitor. In other words, communist China is no longer an adversary. That's news to the UK, Taiwan, Japan, and India, not to mention most Americans. In a policy paper presented to Parliament by British Prime Minister Sunak in May of last year, the new policy of the British government is to update the UK's approach to China to keep pace with the evolving and epic-defining challenge it poses to the international order. First, we will increase our national security protections in those areas where Chinese Communist Party actions pose a threat to our people, prosperity, and security. Epic Defining Challenge accurately describes the threat the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, poses to the existing international order. Even more pressing is Taiwan's reaction to the strategic threat that the Chinese regime poses to them. The island nation is preparing to defend itself from an invasion from the regime in response to Xi's assertion that reunification was inevitable. Meanwhile, Japan is getting busy reconfiguring its entire defense strategy and military-industrial complex around the premise of an increasingly aggressive Chinese military posture in the Asia-Pacific region. Tokyo understands that the China threat is real and that the need to address it is urgent. Notably, Tokyo's defense planners describe current threat conditions as Japan's most severe and complex security environment since the end of World War II. What do the Japanese know that the Biden administration doesn't? India is also adjusting its engagement levels with China because Indian policymakers realize that technology shapes geopolitics. Prior to the 2020 crisis, where Indian troops were killed by Chinese attacks, that wasn't the case. After the military clash, India became concerned about mobile apps and Chinese browsers, data, and search engine results that were manipulated by Beijing. This has resulted in bans on Chinese social media and gaming apps, restrictions on Chinese investment in India's tech sector, concerns about telecom networks and semiconductor supply chains, and more. India's concerns about Chinese inroads into its tech sector are only growing and have concluded that the CCP sees the world in zero-sum terms. Consequently, India, which is China's regional and technology rival, has moved from an economic first trade policy to a security and strategic first posture with regard to China. That means assessing technology transfers and trade from a security and long-term strategic perspective, which also includes assessing China's capabilities to weaponize otherwise non-military technology. India quickly saw the stupidity of being dependent upon technology from a strategic adversary. Why hasn't the United States? Since China is apparently not a strategic threat to the United States or our allies, the Biden administration's path forward for America is to engage in de-risking, not decoupling, with China. As a result, under this administration, the United States and China will continue to be embedded in an extensive web of complex interdependence across all aspects of their economies and broader societies. According to the Center for Strategic and International Studies, this interdependence is viewed as a stabilizing factor that raises the costs of conflict for both nations, but it's a formula for accelerating U.S. decline in the world and inviting CCP aggression.
the Chinese regime is certainly behaving like a strategic adversary on the world stage. It's developing new weapons to destroy or interfere with satellites that the U.S. military needs in its operations around the world. That doesn't have a stabilizing ring to it. What's more, just prior to President Biden's November summit with Xi, intelligence leaders from the United States, Canada, the UK, Australia, and New Zealand, known as the Five Eyes, met in October and warned that China's intellectual property theft in technology across numerous areas is a major threat to the United States and the West and is on scale that is unprecedented in human history. In that same conference, FBI Director Christopher Wray warned that China's intellectual property theft from U.S. companies ranges from Fortune 100 companies down to small startups in the fields of agriculture, biotech, healthcare, robotics, aviation, and academic research. Mr. Ray also noted that there are about 2,000 active investigations into China's technology theft efforts in the United States and that Chinese entities, private and state-owned, pose national security concerns by acquiring or attempting to acquire businesses, land, and infrastructure in the United States. As the CCP continues encroaching on American power and influence worldwide and within the United States, U.S. policy toward China needs to be much less accommodating. A much stronger focus on denying China access to U.S. technology secrets and companies in every vertical and technology market should be Washington's China policy. The Biden administration has some serious explaining to do if only someone would ask. If you found today's discussion insightful and want to dive deeper into the complex dynamics between the U.S. and China, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, and share this video to spark more discussions. Your voice matters.